This is our last video over polynomials in general, specifically multiplying polynomials. So let's review what type of multiplying polynomials we've seen so far. We've seen an example of a distribution when it is a monomial times something or a one-term polynomial times anything else. We distribute that one-term polynomial through. We've seen examples of foiling when we are multiplying two binomials or a two-term times two-term polynomial. We follow the acronym first, outside, inside, last. And now we have an example that looks like this. 5m plus 2 quantity squared. Um, I've actually taught you how to do this, whether you realize it or not. So at this time, I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can multiply out this polynomial. Okay, now before I show you the correct way to do this process, let me show you the incorrect way to do this process. And I saw a picture of this the other day, which I think is a perfect thing to bring up at this time. This picture, what I see here, it says x squared plus 9 quantity squared. It says if you figure that out to be x to the fourth plus 81, then basically you've just killed a puppy. Every time you do something like that, a puppy dies. Meaning, if you came up with the answer of this to be 25m squared plus 4, then you've just killed a puppy. You've just completed my ultimate pet peeve, and no pun intended with this cute little puppy over here. When you have something plus something squared, you absolutely cannot distribute that power. Now, you can distribute that power when it is multiplication, and you can distribute that power when it is division, but you cannot distribute that power if this was an addition or if this was a subtraction problem. So every time you do something like this, I'm going to claim that you've killed a puppy and you've made my ultimate math pet peeve mistake. Well, if that's the wrong way to do that, let's go back and see the correct way to do this. Well, what we need to do is we just need to write out what an actual exponent means. It means we take the base times itself two times. And so now we can see that this is a perfect example of foiling. It's a binomial times a binomial, or a two by two. So we complete this one by foiling. First, 5m times 5m gives me a 25m squared. Outside, 5m times 2 gives me a 10m. Inside, 2 times 5m gives me a 10m. And last, 2 times 2 gives me 4. So I did first, outside, inside, last. Now I combine my two middle terms, copying everything else down in descending order. So this gives me 25m squared plus 20m plus 4. So this is your official answer, and you can see why if you distribute the power, you get the wrong answer, because you lose a whole term. You lose that middle term here. And if you don't believe me, let's go back and see it. Everything else is correct. Your first term is correct, and your last term is correct. But whatever you did from your outside plus your inside and your FOIL process disappears. And so that's why you need to do this by FOILing and not by killing any poor little puppies along the way. So that finishes up my FOILing example. So let's move on to my last example of polynomial multiplication. Now, in this example here, I have a binomial times a trinomial, or a 2 by 3. And I don't have any more special words to use. I've used the word distributing, I've used the word foil, and that's where all of my special cases disappear at. If there's any other version of this, I don't have any formula to follow along the way. The only thing that I need to make sure that I do, I need to make sure that every term in my first polynomial gets multiplied by every term in my second polynomial. 
So immediately I know in my next step how many terms I'm going to end up with. So I have two terms in my first polynomial here, a binomial, times three terms in my second polynomial here, a trinomial, that tells me I'm going to end up with six terms in my next step. And I'm going to do that by just making sure, again, every term in my first gets multiplied by every term in my second. So I'm going to start this by taking my 2x and distributing it through, and then I'm going to take my 4 and distribute it through. So 2x times x squared gives me 2x to the third. 2x times negative 5x gives me negative 10x squared. And 2x times 3 gives me 6. So that gives me half of my terms when I've distributed half of my first polynomial through. Now let me distribute my 4 all the way through. So 4 times x gives me a 4x squared. 4 times negative 5x gives me a negative 20x. And 4 times 3 gives me a 12. Now I could have equally done this problem by taking every term in my second polynomial and distributing it through my first. And it's just personal preference, whichever way you prefer to go about it. And we can see here that I have six terms total, so I have the correct number of terms that I'm looking for. All right, now all I need to do is combine these terms, and I'm gonna make sure that I put it in descending order all at the same time. So I have two x cubed with nothing to combine it to. I have negative 10x squared plus 4x squared, giving me negative 6x squared. I have positive 6x minus 20x, giving me, gives me a negative 14x. And then I have my constant term of 12. So I just copy that down. So at this point, I've combined all my like terms. I've put it in descending order, and so I've got my final answer to this problem here. So if I can't distribute and if I can't FOIL, then I just multiply every term in one polynomial times every term in another polynomial. And at this point, you should be able to figure out how to multiply any version of any polynomials. So this is where we get to stop this video.